salutations, everyone. There you go. That's uh, for those of you who have not seen that. That is my new little intro. I uh, put that together um, for. what I don't want to always do a review, so sometimes I want to do something very short. And the general cinema thing is a thing I had found and kind of clipped out because that's actually the company I used to work for when I worked oh, for. Oh, did you? Movie theater. Yes, I worked for them briefly. They're out. Of, they're out of business, obviously now. Yeah, so, but that was a nice uh, little bit of nostalgia for me. I love that. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I got the uh, what they call the Tarantino vibe the other night when I played it for the first time. I said, "Oh mm-hmm. yeah, I guess, I guess so. I can see that. All right, fair enough." Um, but yeah, no, it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun doing. Just really, a lot, I'm just enjoying doing a lot of reviews. It doesn't really matter about uh, you know how many views I get or anything like that. Just doing different reviews for the. Hol- I've been down the rabbit hole with some of the uh, horror movies and stuff like that, so I still have more reviews to do. Uh, on that regard. So uh, without further ado in the chat, uh, let's uh, first say hello to my uh, co-host tonight. Troy Pacelli is going to be joining me to talk about Argo. How are you doing? It's so great to have you back, man. Salute. I'm, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. It's always, always an honor to be here. Oh, it's always fun to have you. Um, you bring a lot of uh, um, knowledge and uh, just a great element of discernment. Um, and I just love or I that. fake it really good. <laughs> hey, listen, you know what? It doesn't matter if uh, everybody doesn't catch on. I, I actually kind of got caught misinterpreting. I caught myself later chat and the person that brought it up last night didn't catch up that I was wrong about something completely wrong. I had I Googled something because I didn't quite want to speak out of turn. And when I did, I misunderstood something and spoke about an actor who was in a film he wasn't actually in. And I'm like, oh, oh. Well, no, no one said anything. And I'm like, oh, OK. In hindsight. I caught it the next day because I was looking at something else. I was like, oh, wait, that was he wasn't actually in it. He was talked about being in it. So I misconstrued because it's, it's an actor and the person who actually got the job looks so much alike. I didn't know the difference. And it's, yeah. Uh, but hey, you know what? Sometimes you have to fake it till you make it, man. Sometimes you I get it. To. I get it. Well, let's say hey to chat. Before we do, though, let me say um, again, this, the, it pops up on uh, StreamYard. So I don't know why, but I'll be more than happy to recognize them again. Some of my new members. Uh, Zax has been a member. Uh, he is now part of uh, Pops Patrons, and I appreciate that so much. Zach's been great. We've been communicating offline as well about coming up with some other ideas about partnership at, uh, to each other. Olds Gamer 72 Cutlass uh, also joining um, the Pops uh, Generations here. We're uh, having people coming in, as well as Daryl the Derelict, and it's just been great. Uh, when, when, we inch, when you get into a certain point, you can do memberships, and then they kind of like inch you along to get like different types of emoji emoji access and things like that. So it's just the YouTube system and all that guys is so mm. much more complicated than it needs to be. Um, yeah, I, we could just chat about that for a whole stream. It's so ridiculous, but here, look, bye for here. Oh, my friend, thank you so much again, supporting one of my videos, being here in chat. We appreciate it so much. And, mm-hmm. uh, thanks for hanging out. So, all right, Troy, we're going to talk about Argo. I can't believe it was 10 years. I love anniversary stuff. I, I've, I've been a, I've been a preacher of, listen, you know, if you want easy content sometimes, just do anniversary stuff because it's like a, it's a cheeky, easy way to have content. And you could luck into stuff where the normies are looking at thing. Maybe a radio show will talk about something. You never know when you could luck into something. And from time to time, they do okay for me. But I got to be honest, I just do ones I like. You know, I just want to find something I do enjoy, right? Yeah. Uh, Jacob Ironside is here. He's uh, popped in. Now, Jacob and I, we have late night with Pops tonight. So talk about late for me. I almost need a nap between when we're done to the, he, him starting with him. He's going to do Jaws with me tonight. He invited me to come on his show to do Jaws. Literally one of the goats. It's like I consider it like top 10 of all time kind of thing. Uh, that starts late. That starts at 930 Eastern time. So I will be up late dealing with the. Uh, but I don't even need to prep. And so even though I have, I watched the movie again. I watched something else, brushed up on some ideas of some things I could bring interesting to the conversation of all my Jaws obsession. Uh living through that uh, experience as well. So Kenoli Sasquatch is here as well. Thank you, my friend. I listen to work. Hey, man, good, good, good. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, so uh, Argo, my friend, did, had you seen Argo when it came out? And kind of where are you at on, uh, you know, it's, it's film legacy and that kind of thing. I just, I love this film. It's just such kind of an underrated gem for me. Yeah. So this was, when this one came out, uh, a buddy of mine, who's also a, a big history buff, um, had said, oh, this is such a good movie, blah, 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 and then kept referring to it throughout all the, the Batfleck, you know, talks mm-hmm. and stuff. He's like, well, yeah, but he's such a good director. Did you see Argo? And I'm like, no, I haven't seen Argo. It's on my list. Sure. And 
we were talking in the green room and I was telling you, you know, I know the history. I, I, uh, I read the book and so forth, but uh, I, I hadn't gotten around to seeing the, the, the film. It's on my to-do list, right? And of course, what ends up happening, someone reaches out and says, hey, we want to do a collab on this, on this video. And I'm like, okay, guess I got to watch it. So I literally <laughs> just finished watching it today. Awesome. Well, that's great. It'll be fresh Don't in your mind. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be fresh in your mind. Uh, you know, some great uh, things that, uh, you know, you can kind of catch and, and revisit later on, I hope, because it definitely uh, is a film that holds up so well. So uh, Bifer says he saw it um, seven years after the release date. Hey, that's cool, man. It, this film is this film is great. I, 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 I don't even know what to say right now. I think that it, uh, it, it basically expanded my personal knowledge of the history. You and I talked about the book that right. Tony Mendez wrote. My, um, you know, I, I, I kind of went down the geopolitical uh, rabbit hole after 9-11 where I was very ignorant until that point. And then I literally was consuming, I don't know how many books. I was reading two or three books a week, uh, trying to understand the geopolitical history, uh, yeah. trying to understand different elements and different things. Of course, when things were getting unclassified, those were like some of the first, la- the first thing you want to do is tell me there's something unclassified and there's a book or something I can read. I was going to snatch it right off the, <laughs> the shelf as soon as I could. Uh, so with something like this, like our love of science fiction, Troy, like the, the fact that we love John Chambers work and planet of the apes, like we love this dude that made Spock's ears. Like exactly. The, the, exactly. the amount of like Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon references in those scenes, yep. Um, yep, yep. just and the and the concept of I got an idea, let's fake a movie to steal people out of a, like, oh my gosh, talk about like a nerd's uh, heaven of a film. We can have a little bit of seriousness and geopolitical stuff, so Oscar people will pay attention to us, and we get to sneak in Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers references on them, and they won't even flinch. I love it. Yes, and then of course the famous, you know. Argo, go after yourself, which is so, which, you know, I can't make a shirt for a lot of reasons. I've already been lectured about one of my little clips I made. My wife's like, no, she pulled the no card. So I had do to pull know, one. Yeah. Do you know where that comes from in the original history? The go it's after something yourself? That it's, it's, it's like a Tony thing, right? It's a thing that Tony actually. He does, specifically say. said that the, the title, for, and I forget what the original store what the title for the script was. Something like light, like light, the light, the Lord, light. Lords of light. That's Lords what it was. Light. Lords of light. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's like, yeah, this isn't going to work. He goes, uh, how about Argo? Yeah. And they said, well, what's Argo? And he, it he referenced a, a knock, knock joke, yes. which was, uh, Knock, knock, who's there? Argo, Argo, who? Argo, go after yourself. yourself. Yeah, that's right. And that's that doesn't I mean, play into the story, but they kept the joke alive throughout the movie. So it's it's a nice little reference, you know? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. I, I, so, yeah, we'll go through the film very quickly because I want to be able to kind of discuss something. So we'll kind of stop in chunks. So um, sure. let's uh, let's do that. Let's, let's, let's give people a little bit. So if you don't want spoilers, folks. You've come to the wrong show. This is kind of what we do because I want to pay tribute to it. I really don't I want. I mean, we're to talking just... about history from forty years ago, so yeah, yeah I don't want needs to be spoiled if you don't know yeah, it. Yet. Yeah, and I and and I don't want to. Uh, I'm not. I'm not interested in doing videos where I kind of like. It's pretty rare. I'm not going to spoil something. I'll be like, I oh, know that's why I'm doing a video. I'm going to talk about it. I don't have time to be doing two videos. You know, all that right. kind of stuff. So that's not happening. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to dive, dive deep. Um, the film does a great job of giving you, especially if you're a normie, you don't know much about the geopolitical uh, situation at the times of the, of the late 70s. This is 1979. And uh, what led up into Iran with the, with the Shah and the change of power and our government's involvement and all of that. Uh, the film gives you at least something to go on. Right. And then what you end up with is just, uh, just mass chaos breaking out. Um, outside of uh, the embassy. And the film kind of intercuts between some real life stuff. Here you see them breaking into the ground, coming into the grounds, the, the close co- uh, circuit cameras. You see people in the lobby waiting to get their visas and, and their paperwork done. Um, so all these different things are happening. Um, and very quickly, you can see they're just going to overtake the entire embassy and you have people shredding documents, purging everything, which, by the way, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll pause here, Troy, because... Um, yep. The scene always bothers me because it always makes me go, 
maybe we wouldn't have this situation to worry about if our government wasn't doing a whole lot of crap they probably shouldn't be doing. <laughs> but exactly. I keep on. Exactly. Me. That's, I mean, I'm going to, I, I hope you understand. You bring me on to talk about a historical story. I'm going to talk about the history and I'm going to say some things that were accurate and some that weren't. Um, but uh, that opening segment where it kind of gives the background, very simplified, but pretty accurate. Yes, I and, agree. And it doesn't uh, doesn't really paint the U.S. in a, a very good light if you are intellectually honest enough to look at it from the point of view of Iran. Correct. And it's kind of true. This scene that you stopped on, also very accurate. They were trying to get rid of the documents and they had a uh, uh, malfunction in the incinerator. So they had to shred, which became very important because if you have shreds, you can reassemble those shreds. As Batman Returns taught us, with enough time and patience and some tape, you can put everything right back together again. Now that is that that patience comes from one other one minor inaccuracy that I'm yes. not sure why they did it this way, but it wasn't a bunch of children no, playing no. puzzle with these. It was they actually brought in uh, carpet weavers that use their tools of the trade to reassemble the shredded documents. I think that's far more interesting. Yeah, I don't know why that change was made. I don't. I don't know that it was even addressed on why that change was made. Um, I didn't find anything, but I didn't really dive deep. So, uh, let me catch up on chat a little bit. Um, by for saying love John Goodman and Alan Arkin. Uh, he, he gets Alan Arkin's name here. Abomination AJ's hopping in. Hey, my brother. Hope you're doing well, my friend. Uh, let's see. Uh, imagine being stuck in Iran. Iranian prison is so hard time. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. This yeah. movie does a great job of conveying that feeling. This is one of those things that I said, even when they're not historically accurate, you can see why they do what they do to convey a feeling that is accurate. Yeah. So one of the ways they do this in this scene, and we can't play massive segments of the film, folks, so you'll have to watch it for yourself. Right. But one of the things they do really should. well is um, the people that are... So one of the security officers is going to go outside and say, I'm going to talk some sense into them, right? Go talk in sense to this angry mob, which again, 1979, you have to always make sure you're putting yourself in time and place and context, right? Right. Uh, it wouldn't have been totally out of an American's mind that he could talk to people in the Middle East and quote, talk sense into them. It sounds absurd by 2022 standards with a mob that's, you know, in the Middle East, but in 79, and of course they basically grab him they're he's bound up he's he's basically a hostage and they force yep. their way into the door using him as the way to get in and they take over the place and these are the six main characters that escape the embassy to because they had access to the street which is not safe uh, but they go out like a side door to seek refuge and the film takes some creative liberties here because in reality they go to a British embassy and then they're split between two embassies, yep. but here they go to a Canadian embassy. And basically the point is they leave and they're, they're the people on the ground that we got to figure out, like, how are we going to get them out? Yeah. yeah. The other thing too, is the reality wouldn't have been very cinematic. Uh, the reason they had access to that street, uh, they probably wouldn't have even been able to have seen them breaking through the gates like that because they were actually in the in the consulate building which was separated from where the the demonstration was happening and that's why they were able to to get away but the, the they needed to be this dramatic because just the fact they didn't know how close to danger they actually were right but they were scared to death and you need to show that visually in a movie so I understand changing some minor details to do that and expedite time. We've got to move this quicker. We got to get people out of this. Right. We've got to move with the plot. Like if we're going to go through a timeline where they're going to, Oh, we're going to see the closed circuit camera video. They're going to go get a, you know, basically a lackey to go talk to this person who talk to that person. That this is the way that things actually happen, but no, yeah. we need to get moving. So, and not to and mention like, you had oh, said earlier, Rose, princess oh, Leia sorry. Rose. Thank you. Go ahead. You had said earlier, and, and I agree with you 100%, if they had been very literal about how they split up, they went to different houses, and so on and so forth, not very interesting from a filming standpoint. So the idea of having them all go to one place and be together, it expedites the story. 
but you should really read the book. It's it's really worth it. Uh, and, and and just and, and I will say we'll get to the well. I, again, when you're stopping and starting a film like this digitally, like this, to try to share it with you guys, uh, I may I may miss it. So I'll go ahead and spoil it for you or say it so you can when you see that scene, I'll catch it for yourself. One of the beauties of having them all together is it's able to give you some interpersonal tension. Like mm-hmm. one of them goes outside. Well, who saw me go outside? Do you realize you can get us all killed? Basically. Yeah. And you also see a husband and a wife have a tender moment because the stress levels are just kind of building and building and building. Right. So you get moments that in real life, if we had to have two or three locations and a drawn out subplot or what, it just wouldn't work as well. The film did a great job of managing some of those elements. Uh, I think yep. very, very well. So, and Joker Voice is here. Hey there, one of our uh, members. I appreciate having him here with us. Mm-hmm. I appreciate your support, Joker. Um. So our um, our escapees manage to to get out of the building, and word gets back to Washington. And then you cut you cut to uh, news newscasts and all of these different reports of the hostage situations and the White House is responding. And you briefly kind of cut through some different characters of who's who and what's what. And the stellar cast is is revealed yep. very quickly. You have to kind of like you got to take some crib notes to try to keep up with how amazing this cast is because that yes that is Brian Caston, Cranston. Um, ben Affleck is fantastic. Now I know Edward James Almas is someone I do like and enjoy and respect very much and he's taken issue with the fact that we had to uh, you know have the white guy play the Spanish guy but I'll tell you what I figured out from what I can read and tell Mm-hmm. is Ben this is Ben's baby. Ben probably optioned the book. Ben Ben's money and his name and directing it and starring in it is what got this story told. And if he was not attached in that way, I doubt this film got made. That's you know what, what else I, pops? Yes. Do you know who did not have a problem with the casting? Tony Mendez. The guy the, yeah, the actual guy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So well, can you, I think can you any imagine? other opinions don't matter. Ben Affleck is going to play me in a movie and I'm going to cry about it be like, "Yeah, I think I'm good." I think yep. I'm good. You know, okay. It's like, as a white guy, if I was like, eh, Antonio Banderas is going to play me. Oh, all right. I can live with that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> gosh. I would love that. <laughs> who who cares? Like, what are you what are you talking about? This is a major right. upgrade for me. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Joker is admitting that, yeah, he's normally asleep. I know, bro. Thank you so much. Aren't you too lucky? I am very lucky. I am very grateful, my friend, as always. And love your work. Love your videos. I sent him one of my reface masterpieces there to uh, Troy like I did for you for uh, Star Trek I sent him today so I don't know he's gonna be on my channel in a couple weeks too oh it's fantastic to hear good Joker I look forward to that that'll be awesome so um well this is really fantastic and you really do they do a great job of bringing in like um information so they're sharing information with you so you can kind of learn who's who's and the what's what pops Uh, can I yeah can I interrupt you real quick because we're getting past a point that I wanted to make no, no, so they've I'm sure they've gone to in in the movie they've gone to uh, Ken Taylor's house. Uh, mm-hmm. He was the uh, uh, representative from the uh, the Canadian um, consulate. The, yeah, the Canadian ambassador. Mm-hmm. And they, I felt like they really downplayed his role. I honestly, in in reality, I don't remember which one it was. Was friends with Ken and reached out to him, and. Mm-hmm he was already involved in, in getting these gears going. And in the, um, uh, what do you call it? The, the release of, of, of information over the years, turns out that Ken Taylor was, uh, supplying information to the CIA for years there. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I have a theory that all of this information that the CIA has came from Ken Taylor directly. Hmm. Just, just my own personal theory. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the geo- the geopolitical nature of how all this stuff works is really fascinating. I um, I actually on my uh, list of things that I can have on my resume, I got to in- I I can say I interviewed one ambassador. I interviewed the uh, former ambassador to the uh, Catholic Church, the Rome uh, ambassador, and it was a very fascinating look at how we manage the geopolitical natures of basically a religious entity. In a geopolitical yeah. way, like, oh, this is fascinating. So that's how mm-hmm. I he, he sent me an autographed copy of his book, and we had a decent enough conversation. So that was kind of cool to uh, try to understand how some of those nuts and bolts do kind of work. So, 
Uh, the film moves very, very quickly because we're only like 15 minutes in, believe it or not, folks. Yep. We literally have had all of this information, just information dumped on you. They're trapped. What are we going to do? How do we get them out? What's next? They're brainstorming all of the... Uh, one, one of the greatest lines is uh, this best idea of the list of horrible ideas and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. And of course, Tony's flexing his muscles because he understands, you know, one of their ideas is stupid because there is, uh, you know, no, there's snow on the ground. And, you know, right. this is a stupid idea because a normal person can't bike ride that far. And, you know, there's all sorts of things that, you know, politicians are that dumb. It's just stop the, pretending. The other thing is. Nothing, so. Uh, an important detail that, uh, from the book uh, that uh, they they kind of acknowledge if you're paying attention. Uh, his ex uh, Tony Mendez's expertise was in forging documents and creating cover stories. Uh, at the time that these events happened, he was actually the CIA's uh, graphics and authentication division head. Um, and you get that when you see uh, they, the, 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 the CIA is like, OK, we're going to green light your Argo idea. He's actually working on forging a uh, passport, you know, mm, and then yeah. later on you see him forging their passport information and some of the other documents in a very like like a painter doing mm. it by hand you know that was that was his expertise so i'm kind of glad that even though it's not mentioned in dialogue if you're paying attention it's there well i will say that at least having that knowledge is uh very important because in the movie it just it is sort of so glossed over it is a little hard to understand why he's mm. so nonchalant about needing you know the white copies and their passports and all the, you know there's like there's only a couple of lines there's a couple there's one scene where he's working on it those kinds of things so things can go by very quickly there uh, was he, a a point when they the, that didn't happen in reality but happens in the movie where they're uh, at the airport and i was thinking of that show um i th i think it was was it burn notice uh, there was a, a TV show about a, a, a guy that did uh, special ops and he used to narrate, mm. uh, you know, how uh, the be best way to get into a place is to just walk in and act like you belong there. Most yeah. people won't even question and stuff like that. And I was thinking exactly the same thing. I'm like, he recognized the bureaucratic problems that would come up, but he also knew if we play it off, they're going to realize, yeah, this could just be a paper mistake this looks authentic enough you're fine you know yeah well you know what it's it's, it's ironic because that is actually one of the few elements that Andor actually touched on because cassie and the thief they're like well how did you even do this or whatever you just i just walked in and pretended that i belong there you know i just didn't even i just didn't even pretend that i wouldn't belong there like you just you know and that's come up several times in different movies i will tell you in the book um going back on your passport thing the actual Munich book, and I forget what the title is because it's, it's kind of a longer title. The book that's actually uh, Munich is based on. Uh -huh. He talks about their passport forgery process mm -hmm. and that they would even figure out what page the the rust from the staples would be on. Like it was fascinating. Like there's a whole section of like two or three pages. That makes to, sense. I can understand yeah. the how oh, that it, would. Yeah. Oh. It was brilliant. Like we got to replicate the rust from the staple on this page and it will make it feel so much more authentic. Oh, it was just brilliant. Like it was like two or three pages about like how they forged passports and all those kinds of things. Cause he was obviously, you know, Israeli special ops. Well, like and in this movie, they get into a lot of those details when he's, he's like, do you think this is even going to come up? Yeah. If they're interrogating you, you better yeah. believe they'll be asking you these questions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, Decepticons cave popped in. Yeah, I know Twitter. You're on a Twitter ban and now a YouTube. I don't know what you did, brother, but hang in there, my friend. Figure out how to navigate the water. You gotta be true to yourself, but you gotta know sometimes you step on a landmine. So it sounds like that. That's kind of what's happened here, my friend. Das Wolfen's in the house. Hey there, my friend. And uh, Generation Pops member Matt, a common idiot is here. Thank you, my friend. Great content as well. We have great content creators in here. Abomination AJ and Joker Voice and. Yeah, if, you have, if you're not familiar with uh, Matt's work over at A Common Idiot, uh, Troy, you would enjoy his stuff as well. I will definitely check it out. I mean, he sounds like, uh, you know, sounds like a brother 
with the name like Common Idiot, then that makes two of us. <laughs> some people feel like we're just duplicating content because our our reviews of some of this horrific stuff, which I know you don't even participate in, between but, but between the two of us, you won't ever have to watch because we're going to give you if you had between Joker and Matt and myself, you 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 have what you need. You don't need to watch them. We've given you everything you need to go on. Honestly, I am. So, that is why I am so thankful for the YouTube community. You guys take the bullet, so I don't have to. It's, it's a waste of, of time, in my opinion. It's a part. It's a marketing plan for me. I say I take the. I, I I watch it so you don't have to. Because you're watching stuff I don't want to. Like and all these rings of power people. I'm like, you guys are not selling that for me to waste a minute of my time. Like I, yeah. So, um, okay. So let me get this. I had to wait for the uh, the buffering anyway on my yeah on my stuff. I, I got a feeling I made a mess a mistake and I may not have changed this to uh, standard def and it may be running on a high def which will be a difficult process to undo without, you know, starting and stopping or whatever. So it's fine. All right. So this is what the film just, it gets freaking fantastic for me. Like yeah. it was great. I'm not saying I don't enjoy it because I love it. Cause Tony's the one that comes up with the idea. He's on the phone with this kid. They see, uh, uh, they're watching beneath planet of the apes. So of course this is the guy who does the makeup for it. Right. He sees all the rocks and the sand and the stone. He's like, okay, here's what we can do. We can pretend to make a movie and we'll sneak them out. Mm -hmm. And by the way, we got a guy. Actually, we got lots of guys, but in the movie, they stick with one guy. You know, the other guy yeah. we have to go hire. But in, in, re in real life, they had three or four guys. <laughs> that's for sure. And a lot of people had submitted scripts too. And that's that's yeah. the other thing. When you look at who Steven Spielberg submitted a script, mm -hmm. you know, that's yeah. Fascinating. Fascinating. Uh, well, I actually may try to play a little bit of audio. Uh, only because the Goodman lines are gold. I can see why yeah. he would want this job. If he could act, he wouldn't be playing a minotaur. Best. Yeah, I laugh. I literally I love laugh. that. I laughed out loud whenever he says that line. Like I just <laughs> and on the rewatch, I uh, see. I watched it when I decided to do it, and then I rewatched it. I finished it yesterday. And the line that stood out to me was uh, when 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 Tony's telling him, you know, I, I want to what the plan is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. It's coming up. I don't I want to keep. That oh, OK. OK. And I'm not going to miss that one. That one should be a shirt. OK, good. <laughs> That's almost like that is like, yeah, that actually was one of the clips I was going to try to cut out. I just didn't get to it in time. So uh, good, yeah, good. for John, John Goodman act, acting like John Goodman is possibly one of the more underrated actors of our generation because I agree. because he does play like similar characters like there is mm -hmm. some stretch and there is some scenes and things like that but you know once he did like the clover what the second cloverfield movie and things like that yep. where there's this, the stretch is a little bit different um a lot of his roles were very are very similar so he doesn't get the credit that he deserves um agreed uh but yeah no, this film he uh, he has some of the best money. He, he and Alan Arkin, man, it just takes this whole this whole film to a new level. So anyway, so he's on this crappy B movie. He's talking about this guy Lane here. He's the Minotaur, and that right. line to me just makes me laugh every single time. He gets the phone call, and this is there the scene. Is, yeah. This is the best. I got to back up just enough. It's so tricky trying to get this to uh, uh, the right shot. So we may have right. to play a couple times here to get it. And, uh, I know there was a bunch of Easter eggs in this scene too, and oh, I yeah. I know I missed them. Yeah, let's uh, let's go step by step and see what we can figure out here. So because there was a there was a Planet of the Apes mask, and then yep. there was another alien mask there, and I'm like, that looks well, familiar, but well, I well, that's definitely place creature. It. It, it may not be creature from the Black Lagoon, but it's some type of spinoff. Yeah, of yeah, that's what they're going for. Let me see. Let me get the whole list of what he did, so I don't miss something. Um, and then I can probably figure it out. He also did like little piecework things. Like he's, he's responsible for the head and jaws, you know, when the severed head floats out that scene, they shot yeah. in the pool. Yep, yep. He did, he, he did the head. Right. Um, so let me see. Did he do, I don't see creature. So, but this guy did so many uncredited things. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It may just be something they stuck in there, but. You know, who who knows? Uh, let's see what else we got. But I love how Tony's paused, like he's looking around, and uh, they're talking about the crappy film that that John is actually working on. Like, you know, who's 
you know, who's a tar- target audience? Blah, blah, yeah. Blah. yeah. It's, just, it's really a gag on fandom. Just before yeah. there were gags on fandom, it's a gag on fandom. It's really, really good. Um, I actually got to be honest, too. I also love the fact and there, there's a cast in the back of oh, well, that previous shot that kind of looks like a Hitchcock mask, which I'm not sure I can get. Oh, it. yeah. See that on the top left there? This one right there? That's like yeah. Hitchcock. That's like a Hitchcock bust. Um, I don't know if those other actresses and actors there are somebody we should recognize. Um, yeah. I don't think I've been Sometimes in- it's really hard from those plaster casts. Even when you know who it is, you got to squint. There's no hair, you know. Yeah, their it's eyes are closed. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought this was really, really good. I love the chaos in there. Um, this is the, you know, where are you shooting? You know, are you out of your mind kind of uh, response yeah. that he has. Um, so bear with me, yeah, guys. Don't I'm you crying. watch the news? <laughs> yeah, don't you watch the news? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love the fact yeah. that they play it so strong, like, he's obviously worked with the CIA enough that he's not sort of like shocked by this. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, Oh, well, right. there is history there, there a... that is implied in, in the yes. movie. Yeah. Yeah. Because when he answers the phone, cause they say they use his alias and he answers the right. phone. Hey, hey, hey Tony. Tony. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Kind of, which, which is always funny to me on a rewatch. Like it never stops being good. For yeah. Me. Um, do you guys have audio when it goes through? To the embassy. Not yeah, the there's our monster mask take there. Over six people Look at how good those were. Yeah, right? oh, they're so cool. I mean, that one all... looked like the Gorn. He did Star Trek work. I know he did. He, I know he's he's responsible for Spock's ears. Now, whether yep. or not he's responsible for Gorn, I don't know. I uh, mean, but I could see them throwing in a Gorn head just as a a nod because who would catch a pointy ear? You know. Yeah, I'm looking up some of the others that he's on here to see. Which ones might be uh, the throw-in? Because um, he did he did films that I just don't remember enough detail on, like the Human Duplicators. Like I I don't remember enough of the film because these are these these are these, you know, 50, 60 films. Like you know, watch them in mass. And I was in college and I would just watch them like all the time. And you know, who knows uh, what I can actually parse out of my memory without brushing up on it. They're hiding out in Tehran. And that's what I'm gonna go get. Or am I making? I'm- so, I love the fact, and this is a, this is something that's not done. And I will, I'm going to sound arrogant, so I apologize, because I wrote a screenplay, never went anywhere, at least at least a draft, for a 40 page treatment for a screenplay, and they stole my title because it was called uh, "Killing Me Softly," which of course become a Brad Pitt film, and it was sort of like a true lies type of thing, where it's like the regular guy is the spy because these guys are not regular looking. They're, they're regular looking people. They're not built yep. like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. Exactly. And I know in real life, Affleck is a big dude, right? He's six yep. foot four, he's 200 something pounds. He's ripped. Um, but at least in these scenes and most of the movie, it doesn't come out. Like you don't get that. He's James Bond, right? You right. don't get the fact that he can just kill you in a moment's notice. Like it's just, you know, he has to do what he has to do. Right. And I love that element so much with this movie that he doesn't even, fall victim to that trap like even the scene where like he has that quick shot where he takes his shirt off like how easy it would be to showcase you know the shirtless guy that's ripped or he's got a bunch of scars and stories and no he doesn't it's not about him it's never about him it's so brilliantly done so brilliantly done uh let me get to this line i i I have paused a lot folks because i really um i'm trying to share with you one of the bait the best moments of this film yep uh, I'm going to make a clip out of it to use at some point. It's like, what are we going to do? I need you to help me make a fake movie. <laughs> Gave me to the right place. <laughs> I want to set up a production company and build a cover around making a movie. That we're not going to make. No. So you want... All right. So this is the best line. And I don't even know how to do it justice. Uh, let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's, 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 let's soak it up. Yeah. Let's soak it up. If we're going to get copyright hit or whatever, I'm going to soak it up. So all of you right. just... Hang in there, folks. I come to Hollywood and act like a big shot. Yeah. Without actually doing anything. No. You'll fit right in. You'll fit the right best. in. And he goes right to that John Goodman, big crap eating grin. Lee Majors. Love Lee it. Lee Majors gets the close up, by the way, which yeah. is totally an after. Saw Natalie movie. Wood up there, too. Yeah. yeah. But the fact that they would cut to like Lee Majors is like totally done for us. 
like us yep. that lived in 1979. Like he's the rock star. Exactly. He's a six million dollar man, dude. It's exactly. Like, oh, this movie. You know, <laughs> so he uh, when when he said, you know, I want to set up a a, a studio, right? Mm -hmm. You remember what the name of that studio is? Uh, six something. Studio Six. Studio Six. Yeah. That's basically because they were trying to rescue the six. Six, six people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So basically it's like, okay, now we have to go to the next level. We got to get a real producer, someone that won't talk to anybody, someone right. that will do this, someone that we can trust, whatever. <laughs> then they go to Alan Arkin's house. Hi, I go so by the way, I got to meet, by the way, I got to meet him on the set of Edward Scissorhands and he is just a super cool, like, I can't believe I'm doing this for a living kind of guy. I like can he, imagine that. I was uh, I was really surprised because he comes across as being like a Hollywood guy. He, you know, and of course the Arkin yeah. name and some of those things you would think. But I'm just I was just a toady on set, and he just was like, "Yeah, it's good, man. You enjoying yourself? You having fun? Did you see my scene? I had a good time. That was kind of cool, huh?" Like, <laughs> he was just like, "What is happening?" And then I met Diane Weist, who plays you know his other half in Edward Scissorhands, and she yeah. was like, "Did you get some of these cookies, honey? Have some more cookies with me." It was like, "What the <laughs> heck is happening in this?" It's just. <laughs> You just sometimes you get lucky with what you're experiencing, and uh, so I have a soft spot for Alan Arkin. I I, I kind I, of feel like some of that personality comes through in this particular role too. Uh, yeah, Lester is a freaking rock star. Like he is a rock star. He deserved his uh, supporting Oscar nomination, and um, yeah, it, it's definitely well deserved. Great, great use of the uh, composite character because mm -hmm. uh, you know obviously. Robert Seidel was the real fake producer, you know, right. on With, this. But Jack Warner. But there were other involved. people yeah. that that Lester Siegel was kind of representing to streamline yeah. the story. Yeah, and Jack Warner in particular, because he's in cahoots with the CIA, and there's other stories that we can right. dive into about, you know, the Warner and what because they knew they had to grease the wheel with the government like that was just, it just it's just how it worked that's why for someone like troy and i we you know we're, we're a little decades older than some of you you know yeah. when we talk about our politics we don't talk about it like as much about good guys and bad guys as some people because we realize they have more common with each other than they do us yeah. and these hollywood people know that that's why they grease both sides of that machinery <laughs> Yeah. And it, and definitely back in the 1970s and 80s. Like that, that was I, I hope if you're going to show another scene, I hope this is the scene you're going to show. I want to because I want to show. Um, you might have to we, back up slightly. Uh, let me see. Let me see which one I want to. Do you have the feature where you can go back 10 seconds or something like that? Not on this. It doesn't do it. It's so frustrating. Darn it. This scene? Yeah. Yep, yep. This makes the whole movie for me, to be honest with you. This scene. Hmm. Let me get. Let me give it another. Couple because it puts the whole idea in perspective and why people are even doing it. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It won't. It jumps. It jumps like five. And it's, it and it's more from from Arkin's acting. You know, in his face and his mannerisms than anything he says. Yeah. Yeah, watch watch his acting. I can't even turn the volume off to make it easier to. You know, a town of four million people. Death, you know, their death death to America. You want to set all up all the reasons a week. why this won't work. Yeah, you, you're gonna you're gonna lie to Hollywood in a town where everyone lies for a living. Blah blah blah. And you're gonna sneak 007 over yeah. here in a country like that wants that. CIA blood. Look at and look at Goodman's face. Goodman plays this yeah. just like yeah. I don't yeah. Less, pretty less much that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, Lester, what's your point? Like, like, thanks for. I mean, you're catching us up. I mean, I, maybe, yeah, yeah. Went to the maybe somebody went to the bathroom in the earlier part of the film, but they're all caught up now. This is right. where exposition can be done, by the way. Um, and uh, and you're gonna walk out the Brady Bunch, basically. It's like, yeah, yeah pretty much. That's pretty much what we're gonna do. Okay, and look at his face. Oh, it's so good. It's so yeah. good because right. his eyes cut over to that TV. Yeah, and they see the most horrifying images. Yeah, of people being, you know, bound and uh, blindfolded and used as you know human hostage and targets yep. and examples and oh, yeah, movie's great. And again, folks, if you don't know the story, you know the the, the Tony Mendez book, uh, Master of Disguise. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Argo's been out for ten years. It's hard to believe. Uh, no, you know, yes. So, 
Yeah, let's see. Um, let's see. This is probably Ben Affleck's best movie, though I prefer I agree. Him Batman. Hmm. Acting or directing? I don't know. I would have to spend some time because I have to admit, like, Gone Girl is really good. Like, it's a real. I'd have to watch it again to really be fair. Um, there are moments in like the town are really good. So I would have to kind of be fair and do a more of a dive deep into some of those a little bit and reevaluate this. This is more like a guilty pleasure for me, guys. I can watch Argo like crazy. My wife just like is bonkers. Like, you're watching this again? Like, yeah, I watch it. Yeah. It's I don't get to say I watch something annually. This one definitely makes its rounds probably more than once because it's just it's an easy watch for me because mm -hmm. it, I don't have to watch every single moment now. Uh, but these scenes are so yep. good. And the, the script is nearly perfect. I, I, there's just not, there's no downtimes. There's no, it real is weird, tight. Yes. There's no real weird characters for no reason. Right. There's no real weird cutaways or, or useless scenes or anything like that. The music. Oh, oh my gosh. The songs, <laughs> the songs keep me from playing cuts of the clips. I can't play clips because true. the musical track copyright flag. That's me. true. But they're, but they're perfect. Yes, they like, are. You know, what do I do to cut, put music over? It? Right. Long story short. Lester says good. Oh, here's a, uh, here's a uh, Ken Taylor. Uh, you know, getting, finding out the maid kind of knows something's up. They're not ever leaving. But you real know. quick before you you move on from there, the the culmination yep. of that scene is he basically lays out all the reasons it's not going to work, and it for it just looks like he's getting ready to get up and walk away, and he stops yep. and he looks at that TV, and yep. he sees the 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 person with the the blindfold on and everything and he just you see it in his face the the anguish and the i can't walk away from this yeah. i it's it's hopeless but i still got to do some and yep. he turns and he looks and he goes we're going to need a script yep so they go through this pile of scripts uh, a lot of creative liberties with this whole process. Don't read too much into this. Lester does get great lines, though. If I'm going to do a, if I'm going to do a, a fake a fake movie, it's going to be a fake hit. I guess. It's a yes, <laughs> and I understand movie. that from a producer's point of view. Yeah, yeah, right. But by the way, there is that. If you talk to actually like Hollywood insider people, they all know about each other's unproduced projects and stuff. Right. There's a comment about Warren Beatty later talking about killing the the Warner six picture deal thing. Yep. And they'll talk to you about that stuff. Like, you know what it is like this stuff is it, there is their life. They live and breathe this element of movie making. It's very, very interesting and also quite disturbing in some ways. True. Uh, so this is the skeezy uh, guy that owns the rights to the script that they're going to try to make. And this is him giving his long, uh, you know, brilliant uh, through my cataracts. I see your bull crap. That was, I, oh, yeah, Warren that Beatty. is great too. You got to see it for his scenes. Yeah. And then they go to have a taco. Want to have a taco? Very not, humanizing here. And they're not like in a restaurant. There's not a bunch of cheesy things. It's just them hanging out on the steps somewhere, having a bonding moment over being dads. Yeah. Because one of the great subplots is how Tony is really torn that he has to live this life and be away from his family. He's kind of tearing his family apart. He can't be yep. with his son. He's missing out on these key moments with his son, but we're not going to like derail the story. We just lay little pieces and breadcrumbs so that later on there's the so much later, more info. Yeah. 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 Callbacks are, are that's you know, the way you tell a story. Yeah. I wish I could write this good. I wish I could write. I this. wish most of the people making TV shows and movies today could write like this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is them coming up with the idea of selling the lie. So you sell the lie by taking a big read through. They do this big, massive uh, variety magazine ad and they do this read through. And uh, this, this is, read through, I don't know if, if this is the way it, if, if they actually do this on junkets and whatnot, I've never heard of anything like that before. That's interesting. Uh, and I spent, a, I mean, I, I have spent briefly trying to look at some of this stuff. Now I do have the poster. That's what I use as our backdrop. So sure. I had the poster. Um, that was easy enough to find, but the, but footage or photographs from this read through. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, but yeah, there, this is, this is, a. Uh, this is some of the stuff that's going on, how silly this is. Yeah. So the, so the juxtaposition is... Exactly, yes. 
the juxtaposition is is the rescue mission is playing out here with the actors reading their fake movie with their Flash Gordon, Buck Rogers, Star Wars type references and all of yeah. that. And it's juxtaposed against Carter giving a speech, you know, yep. talking, you know, talking tough and whatever. Nothing's actually happening. And that's against the fact that these hostages are in this embassy. They're trapped. They don't know who's going to come. If anyone's coming, they hear the president and they just, they're it just this hopelessness and this music is playing. It is. And I, so and I do good. want to say to anybody who's going to dig into this history, what pops just said about, Carter talking tough, you know, this is, this is president Malays, you know, yeah. talking tough, look up what Malays is and how it relates to Jimmy Carter to get some context on that. Yeah. Yeah. So then they cut back and they got to get all this through. Oh, this is the, uh, the Argo. Yeah. Okay. By so, the way, they were drinking Jameson whiskey there. Just, all right. just a piece of trivia that I noticed as I was watching it because it's me. <laughs> all right. So there's a shot that I, I kind of landed on, and I kind of it's the the weird thing I, I'm gonna have to figure out a different way to sh do these shares. But the one reporter is asking Lester too many questions, like why Argo? What's it called Argo for? You know, it's the thing, and it goes here, and it goes everywhere, and it does whatever. And he basically does this thing, and he, and it's 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 a joke. I mean, I, we talked about it earlier. Uh, Argo, go f yourself, right? And that becomes the joke that we just kind of keep going with from here on out, right? Which is really where the title came from, a joke, yeah. a knock-knock yeah. joke. Yeah. So then uh, it's all the prep work to get ready to go. And then he makes the call. He's trying to get a hold of the family. You have the folks that are there in the embassy. Just, they're so anxious. They're on edge. There's chaos around them. Some guy, dude in the street gets shot. And they basically they had been him some advice, like, you know, go, go to the film commission and, and do this and whatever. And they'll cut back to Washington. And, of course, our press has gotten the information that they're out. And they're trying to figure out how to get the press to sit on it. Otherwise, they can get them, you know, you're just going to get these people killed if you run this report. And this is the chaos. They, this, is, this is how they handle the tension in these scenes is a lot of things are happening around the main characters, yeah. but not to the main characters. So in order to heighten the danger in a scene like this, he can just witness what's happening to someone else. We don't know what's happening to that person or what got them into trouble, whether they deserve it or not. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You see chaos. So you understand he's in this horrible, crazy, chaotic environment situation. Real quick, Pops, there's one scene that we passed by that I had in my notes I wanted to mention. Sure. Um, even before they get to the, the, the read-through, mm -hmm. um, you, you see the, uh, the storyboards that have been done up. And yeah. you know who did those storyboards in reality. That would be right? Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby, played by uh, Michael Parks. And one of the things that hurts my heart about this movie is he's credited as playing Jack Kirby in the credits, but he's not mentioned as such in the film. Doesn't even look like Jack Kirby. And the artwork that we see isn't even in Jack Kirby's style. So once again, the powers that be screwed jack kirby out of the recognition he's due that's very very true my friend very very true my friend i don't it, it does so whenever i'm use this little the movement it doesn't want to land on that scene exactly no because it's a very short scene it's a blink and yeah. you'll miss it scene yes yeah, those, right those here. illustrations will come up later on though yes yes so yeah kirby did the art on these storyboards which were done for the earlier version, this, you know, this, uh, what's it called? The, uh, the one we were talking about, the light. Um, that's what the original, some of the storyboards were kind of tied oh, to. Oh, Lords of Light. Yeah, exactly. Like Lords of Light. There are Lords of Light storyboards. So, all right. Um, let's see. We move ahead. We get there. He goes to seize the foreign ministry for film. He gets his little permit filed, which comes up later. You have the yep. chaos that's there in the actual embassy. You have these great shots that are trying to showcase, you know, Iran. And then, of course, you're always cutting back to what's actually happening to keep your keep your finger on the whole plan. Because obviously, they have to have this off fake office and yep. a phone, and someone kind of has to be there to answer the phone just in, so, in just in case an Iranian official or somebody is calling to check on the studio and if it's legit or not. Right. So they don't say it, but we see Lester just kind of standing around. We assume John Chambers tags him out, and they just take turns manning this phone. 
um, basically most of the time. Yep. I think it's brilliant. And again, there was actually more people doing it, but you still get the idea. Yeah, right. Um, and then you get, like, I, I think we, I don't know if we talked about it before the show or after. He he shows up, but we do have these moments of the tension uh, yep. with the characters and whatever. And then, of course, you get, like, regular-looking Joe shows up and says, I'm going to get you out. You're going to be fine. Like, look yep. at this guy. This guy is so non-impressive, uh, right. uh, non, non-convincing. There's nothing. <laughs> there is nothing authoritarian. Like you believe this guy is going to pull any of this off. He doesn't come across as being James Bond or Bruce Wayne or you no. Know, it's just a dude in a tweed jacket and flannel shirt. And that we're good. Well, I'm just. You but know, that's the. You. That's the interesting conceit, right? I mean, from mm-hmm. Hollywood, we always expect him to look like James Bond. When in reality, just mm-hmm. like uh, the ninjas were never dressed in black and whatnot, right. they were they were dressed like everyone else to blend in. Same thing. A spy is somebody who looks like mm-hmm. everybody else and blends into the crowd. Which, by the way, did you watch the Americans? I did not. I saw clips of it. I never actually watched the the show itself. Uh, it can be. It can be very raunchy at times, so I had some issues I had to get through. Uh, but I can tell you what, it was very, very good. Very, very, I, I say believable. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Um, you know, using the old guy who moves the moves the message from point A to point B to transition to the young lady who's secretly the waitress who does the, I mean, it's like you just see the disguises and you, I, I, it's a freaking amazing show. Really, really is. It gets caught up in like other other little subplots and things like that. So, uh, so let's see what else we had here. Uh, Chris Berger hopping in another one of a uh, great members. Appreciate yep. that. Chris, thank you for being with us. Affleck in the way back was amazing. Brutal movie to watch. He worked his butt off. Yeah. Cause he's an alcoholic basketball coach film. That was a really good performance as well. Like I said, um, Affleck doesn't get credit either for, you know, immersing himself growing as a creator growing as a as a performer we really have to say that so. one thing that kind of stood out to me mm-hmm. his hair and beard was mm-hmm. so period appropriate yeah you know? yeah he looks legit i mean everything speaking of legit. period appropriate you didn't ask what i was I, sipping on but i'm sipping on a tab is that ta- a very is 70s that a tab? drink yep holy cow yep. Right, so any of you kids not old enough to not a, a not a uh, sponsored uh not a product placement here I don't even know. They don't, don't make tab any, anymore anyway. I just have a business. bunch of cases have, of it. You have, a, you, have a, you have a tab uh, tab can. That's freaking yeah, great. Man. Exactly. There, tab. That's awesome. Um, What was the orange juice stuff? The astronauts orange juice stuff. That, tang. Uh, tang, yeah. So Tang and Tab were the two big things when we were kids. Like, And it's like, I got to be honest, I never really cared for either one. I'll know. tell you, I love Tang because I positively associated it with uh, Boy Scouts and camping because that's what you drink oh, gotcha. when you're camping. Gotcha. Jacob Ironside had said farewell. We appreciate that. I'll be on with him later. Uh, and Chris Purgis said hashtag justice for Kirby. Agreed, there is, 100%. There's, there's not even a way to give justice to those founders. We, you know, right. we need justice for Ditko. You know, it's just it just keeps going. It just keeps going at this point. Now we're half of what I think they're doing is motivated by uh, screwing these families out yep. of uh, their royalty. So, uh, Des Wolfen also has to step out. Hey man, listen, appreciate it. Uh, appreciate you having you stop by and spend time with us. We do so. Uh, so yeah, the film uh, moves rather quickly uh, in some ways, and then slow in other ways. Like it's, it, we're all, we're an hour in. So yep. we're kind of in this pivot point now where he's in Iran. And now it's about the struggles and the chaos of how to get them prepped and ready and out. And they literally have like two days. They literally have like, you know, he's told he has 72 hours, but he has to get there. So he has two days. Yep. So they're running down the shenanigans of all the different things that are going on. They're, of course, terrified out of their minds. Uh, they're giving them their profiles, all the stuff they have to read up on. And they kind of delegated those out based on uh, some of their uh, already existing skill sets. Uh, all the performances are fantastic. You know, um, take Donovan on the left. Scoot McNary was the one guy with the glasses. Um, this is that cutaway you were talking about yep. earlier where they didn't really have kids. They just had, you know, weavers who actually put all this yep. stuff together. And basically what happened is they went through the inventory of the staff. They're recreating enough of the photos so they could through the process of elimination go through who everyone is and if they have everyone, which I think right. was more about who they actually had in case they actually netted someone who actually might matter. Right. 
Then one of the Iranian film officials invites them to do a tour of the bazaar. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword. It's like a trap because they kind of they know it won't be safe, but they kind of have to go or it will raise red flags. The Iranians did it because now they can profile all these people that are in their country. Like it just has it has like three different purposes on the surface without an, yeah. without even getting to underlying things. And when it's when it's that neat, you know that it's probably something made up for the movie and in fact it is. This yeah. never happened, but I'll tell you, I will defend this because it gets, again, across the tension of these people, what they were feeling, Mm -hmm. because they literally were afraid for their lives. And you can't see that from dialogue. You can only see it by a contrivance like this. They walk around this bazaar. As you can see, she's, she's snapping photos, and one guy gets upset, and that creates some chaos. This is one of the Iranian investigators. Uh, basically yep. showing up at the house and asking the maid about some information. Um, and she's covering her behind. And this is them learning some of their stuff, you know, re- which, by the way, I have said more than once Toronto instead of Toronto. There's no toe right. in Toronto. Right. Uh, that definitely is a great line in here, by the way. I think it's I, still, I give credit to the fact that the Blue Jays play here in town all the time. And I grew up just knowing Toronto and not Toronto. It's kind of like there's no noise in Illinois. Exactly. Exactly right. Uh, and I will say they did such a great job of managing. And, and, and as I rewatched this yesterday, I was kind of taking note of some of the script structure and realize they have a lot of subplots and elements yep. that are being juggled. And I know they have kind of exaggerated some and minimized others with real life. But the fact that they do it all because it creates. I mean, let's face it. This film is set around tension of getting people out of an airport. But you are on the edge of your seat uh, at the end of this film when this stuff's it being. And I know it's being manufactured and it's being escalated and some yeah. of that stuff. What Tony said, what smooth as silk, right? Smooth as yep. silk. But they had to come up with a way of of sort of like for you, the audience, feeling the tension and the risk and those types of right. things, right? If you can imagine, you know, everything's going along great, everything's smooth sailing. You don't know that when you're in it. Correct. You, your mind, because your life is on the line. Your head is going through all the possible things that could go wrong, and you expect to happen at any minute. Real quick, I wanted to, because uh, Chris Persa is asking a question directly about the can that I have. Mm-hmm. No, this this is uh, the most recent. <laughs> this can I just finished drinking this. This mm-hmm. is uh, I have a I have cases of of tab. Uh, from the weeks before they took it off the market just last year. So hmm. this is this is not a, a 1970s can of tab. This is, you know, a 19 or a 2021 can of tab. But, gotcha. you know, still. Before the move, I had finally uh, finished up my uh, original Twinkies. We went through our gap of Twinkies. We had original Twinkies and they kind of went out of business for a little They've come back. But during before we moved, I was like, I guess I need to finish my original Twinkies. My wife's like, you're not moving the Twinkies. You know, you gotta, we have to have a line with certain things, you know, it's like, no, the Twinkies are, yeah. So I had to finish my Twinkie. We had to if have a little still, Twinkie party. If you still love Twinkies, uh, the, uh, just, just this past year, Ghostbusters released a, uh, Ghostbusters, uh, cookbook that's got, uh, a recipe for a giant Twinkie. Yes. And I read, I haven't made it, but I've read through the recipe and I think it would taste exactly like the old fashioned Twinkies. Oh, that's so exciting. It sounds so much fun actually. So Joker voice bailed out to get in some sleep. Uh, Chris Persia had his question. So, and thanks yep. for uh, answering the question. No problem. Um. So yeah. So watch. So again, they don't paint Carter in a good light. I'm not saying they go full on with what actually happens, but they do yeah. a good job. They know Carter's Carter's gotten weak need. He's pulling the plug on your operation, and he's allegedly going to try military option, which we know wasn't really on the table. But in theory, I felt like. And and tell me if you agree with me on this. Mm-hmm. I suspect mm-hmm. the reason that they did that was they were projecting. Um. Uh, Project Eagle Claw onto this, yeah. Yeah, right? A little bit, a little bit, because that hasn't happened yet. But it's going to make him look really terrible, and I think he was less trepidatious at this point than he would be after Eagle Claw. 
Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to have to go a little fast to get through some of the yeah. stuff. So basically because they call the mission off, there's panic because they're give, they basically put all of the onus on Tony and Tony's like, I just can't do it. I can't leave them here with a chance. They're just going to get caught and get killed. We have to try to get them through. I'm getting through. And he calls it in and then there's panic because when the operation gets killed, they shut down the passports and the whole thing, the operation getting through. And yep. the film basically has to go all the way to the white house. has to go all the way to Carter, which goes through, goes through his aide, which is played by Kyle uh, Chandler. And this is great. And I will say there's a great line. By the way, he looks like a lot like the real life. Like, does he look like? Isn't it Sandy Berger? I don't or, know. You're uh, you're just showing Arnie? me right now, pops. Oh crap! I'm sorry. <laughs> Nobody wants to look at me for that long. <laughs> oh, I just freaking yeah. Anyway. Uh, okay. So, well, the irony is I'm not really showing anything of any major significance. Right. We're just moving through, uh, you know. <laughs> well, you, the rut, and you rut won't rut get copy, copyright struck when it's I on will not, I will not get that. So, <laughs> anyway, he's taking people through. I will I will say this. When they have to reach out to file Kyle Chandler's uh, thing, there's a great line about, you know, well, where is he? Nobody knows where he is. We're a spy agency. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> find him. He's we'll, like, we'll have to find him. Like, what are you talking about? We're the and, CIA. And as you alluded, that whole thing with the shutdown and everything mm-hmm. didn't happen. Right. But the tension needed to be there because in reality, Mendez woke up 45 minutes late. So there was mm-hmm. enough reason for everyone to think something had gone wrong. He's not coming. We're not going to make it in time. And when your life is on the line, you know. Do you remember if there was like some questions if the operation was going to go through or not. It's been a while since I read the books. I don't no. remember. Were there, were there, no, there, no there wasn't. There, there, there was no retraction, right? There was no... There was not. Yeah, it was right. approved all the way through. And honestly, there's no reason that the CIA would pull out because their role in it at the time was completely secret. They had nothing on the line. Right. They were really letting the, the, the Canadians do all the work. And yeah, they, they were it, just helping. They haven't have, had an agent there. And they were doing all yeah. this stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, so then, 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 then this last 30 minutes is about them trying to get on a plane that leaves Iranian airspace. Yep. And it's a lot of cool manufactured stuff. So if you want to fact all of this stuff, you're going to be very disappointed. However, let me tell you what, when you're watching this in real time, mm-hmm. You end up on the edge of your seat with some yep. sweaty palms. You're you're every single step along the way. First, it's about oh they don't have this slip of paper and they have to get the supervisor and they have to get this person and then they have yep. to go to this guy, and they they have have set all of this up earlier in the film. Everything they're doing is a callback mm-hmm. to something else. So when they talk about the white slips, when they talk about the passports, when they talk about um, the different layers of security, right? You've got like the noobs who may or may not ask or may or may not check. But then the last group are trained in like American or European countries. We know they're fluid in English. So don't listen, don't pretend because they're not going to let you know they know your English. They might catch yeah. you talking amongst yourselves and things like that. All of those callbacks play out in this last 30 minute sequence well even the one guy who speaks farsi they established Mm -hmm. that back when they were going through the dossier on each one right good point and this guy kills it by the way yes this this guy his performance is freaking fantastic i agree he has crazy in his eyes he looks the part he looks like the alpha in the room with this young mm-hmm. guy to his left. I hear this guy mm-hmm. to on our right yep. to the behind him. Like this guy's like the younger. Yeah. This this actor, and I have no idea who this actor is. Right? I got to be honest. I have no idea who this actor is. Sure. Um, because some of them just probably have like, yeah, I don't even know which ones are which. Some of them are like OSS officer so and so and checkpoint three, and I don't even know which ones are which. He is amazing. So, um, and this is where, like you said, the uh, Kirby uh, storyboards yep. come back here in a minute. They yep. take all, they, they, they keep pulling them aside. They keep doing whatever. And then this guy, he gets to uh, showcase his Farsi. Yep. And this is, this, this scene is just, it's incredible. So, and what I loved about this scene mm-hmm. is he's, he's, he's selling them on like a pro uh little guy against the big guy story 
Yep. Like it fits the Iranians versus the U.S. metaphor. Like it really, yep. really does. Like the story of the movie would be something the Iranian people would think of themselves as fighting the United States as the enemy. So let's play a little bit of this guy talking right. as this stuff here. Maybe you guys are Look at that art. Yeah. So the art is cool. Not and it Kirby's. is cool. <laughs> it's not Kirby. Yeah. But it's cool. Yeah. It is cool. Uh, so he basically does this whole thing. And I got to be honest, he does the cliche pew, 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 which makes me laugh every single time. Right. He literally does pew, 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 which is right. my wife's joke for everything. It involves nerdy pew, lasers pew, and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Pew, pew. Um, so yeah, they just kind of keep progressing and then they have to make the phone call and who right. will answer the phone? Well, then they have to manufacture a little bit of tension for right? why there's nobody there to answer the phone, right? There's a delay in the phone call, not getting the answer right away. And real uh, quick. Hi, lovely Sherry. It's good hey, to see you. hey lady. Hope you're doing well. And then they're like the second plane to leave and then the plane's not going. They finally are catching on and they're chasing them down, but the plane makes it and the plane gets in the airspace and, yeah. and all of that. So, and there's the last little shot about, you know, they're not actually out of the airspace yet. Won't, and right. Like, oh, now we can, they we can serve, we can they, serve booze now. <laughs> again, established earlier on when he was coming into Tehran, you know, right. they said, you know, we're, we're entering, we're going to take the, the alcohol away. And same right. thing. That's how they knew they were out of, Iranian airspace when they could start serving alcohol again. That's the moment they could breathe easy. Yeah. And then uh, it kind of moves along. You have them kind of going back and forth about, uh, you know, the movie's being shut down. Ah, that's the breaks, you know. And of course, he's <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's smugging, smiling to himself. Um, uh, Tony doesn't turn over one of the storyboards, keeps it for his kid, and uh, kind of tries to make amends with the family a little bit. Yeah. And then the credits start rolling over, um, sort of. Uh, well, the, the toys one quick the, scene the that I think your audience would really appreciate is when he goes to see his son. They do a mm -hmm. good shot of his toys behind. That's what I'm trying him. to get it to play on. Yeah, to, there you go. All right, let's do okay. this. So, yeah. And so Other the first toys, thing I know, hmm? I, I want to ask you because you will know. Yep. Pause there. Yep. Okay, because obviously that is the classic ten thousand dollar new in the box original yep. Star Wars set with the cloth Geoda. So that's pretty legit. That's yep. a freaking legit looking piece. So, a couple things here. First, you will notice that this is a production error. I believe this is not something that a child in the seventies who has this would have made this mistake. Jawa and Sand Person are switched. Correct. Uh, but the other thing is it's probably not as big a deal as you think because Hasbro re-released this about six years ago. Correct. So this right. might be the reproduction one. But I will say too, none of us actually kept this stuff like on the displays and things like that. They were going to be in a box. They were loose. They were played true. with. They were whatever. Wouldn't That's be. True. Even of even of those of us that had like little displays and stuff, they were definitely more, you know, chaotic than this. So. Yeah. But you would know apes and tre Trek yep. stuff. Like all this Migo. looks legit. All this stuff looks legit. In fact, that is not only legit. I can't tell. Oh no, no, I can absolutely tell. Both the Kirk and the uh, the the ape on the left. Those are the uh, the first style bodies that Migo put out. You can tell because they've got the the metallic pin in the joints and the legs are like really spread wide because the, the bungee cords inside were really, really tight. I want to try to yep, get to yep. the shot because so we can go around the room and some other stuff. There is a Linium Falcon. Oh, I remember that, that robot back there too. It played, yep. it was a game that played, uh, 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 it was a quiz game that, that played with uh, audio cassettes. Mm, okay. You got me on that one. I don't remember that one. So let me jump. I've even seen a, a, a YouTube video on how it worked. Yeah, because there's an Ohura piece of a TIE fighter. Yep. He Since she's in that chair, he obviously had the bridge set, which I think he would have had out if he had a display going. I will say this. The Hardy Boys. Think, I want to know if you, if you can back me up. I don't know for sure because this would have come out. So this is supposed to take place in 79. Yep. Would we have had a big Boba Fett in 79? Yep. That came out um, shortly after 
Oh, all oh, right. That no. came out just before Empire Strikes Back. What year was Empire Strikes Back? Huh? Empire's Empire is 80. But did the big one come out first or did the little prototype one come out first? I didn't uh, think the, the big little one proto- came out until after. The little prototype was delayed. So I think the big one hit the market first, but that was a second wave of 12-inch figures. So it's really close. I am not prepared to say it wouldn't have been out. Because that's the only, like, of of the stuff that's in this room and in this shot, that's the one nerdy moment. I'm not quite sure. I would have, you don't need to find Echo Base, uh, Nick and Coach with them. If that that fits the timeline or not. Um, But no, it's fun. It's fun to see. And I will say this, they, they tried a lot. They tried a lot. They put a lot of effort in being close. They really did. Um, and then they have like the typical uptakes for these type of uh, uh, time pieces where they try to line up why certain actors have certain looks, some yep. of the different shots. Because these, some of the things yeah, they were trying showing to go what for. the actual people look like. Exactly. Right. So enjoy all that. That I think all that was uh, really good. And it does lend, even if it's not really lending credibility, it's a post to kind of lend some credibility. So, And hey, Dean Krantz. Hey, my friend. Hope you're doing well. This is like some of Dean Krantz would have been able to uh, chime in about too as well. He's more of our yeah. age group. So, yeah. So uh, I remember. Here we go. I remember this rescue. Living here in Michigan, folks, from Canada, we celebrated for getting those people out. Detroit area businesses gave discounts to Canadians in appreciation. That is freaking great. Yeah. What a great story. Thank yeah, you, Dean. I knew you'd have a lot to bring. The Canadian story. operation. I was saying at the top of this show, the Canadians did not get the uh, the the proper respect in this film that they deserve for this, this project. But this also brings up, uh, there was one scene uh, after the, the hostages were taken. It was uh, an establishing shot of, of, uh, yellow ribbons on, mm, trees, on trees and whatnot. Yeah, right. I remember that. That was the first time that that was done, you know, in in culture for some, you know, for a situation like this. Right. And I remember uh, our school going out and as a project, we all put yellow ribbons on the trees around the school, and then we did it by our house and whatnot. Um, and that was because of you know the Tony Orlando and Dawn song, tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree. Sure. Yeah, I remember that too. I do remember the yellow ribbons. I do remember. So like my first real memory of this type of stuff is like the Ford Carter race. Like they would have those little highlight magazine type things. Mm-hmm. So you at yep. home, you you kids in school, you get to play along. And you get to vote and you get to pretend yep. that you know anything about anything. But basically, you're just a reflection of what your parents have told you. Exactly. To do. Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, yellow ribbons. And then, of course, when you have 79 into 80 and you're transitioning to Reagan, you you really couldn't not know this stuff was happening. Now, maybe you didn't right. quite understand it or whatever, but it bled. Politics bled into all of this. It was such a big deal. I mean, they had hostages for love of freaking people. This stuff was on the news like every single day. Yeah, yeah. it was crazy. I was, uh, uh, I was real close with my grandmother back then, mm-hmm. and uh, – she she would talk about Reagan because she had been a fan of him as an actor. You know, mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. remember her once saying, uh, "Who would make a better politician than an actor?" Mm-hmm. You notice he never he's never reading off a teleprompter. Yeah. He's he has, memorized his speech just like it was a script. And I'm like, "Yep." And he, and, and he was always played up as being like senile and couldn't keep it together and all that kind of stuff. And that just was never legit. Nope. So. Not I don't. Even, he was sharp as a whip. I don't remember this, Dean. Um, but no, I'll take your word on this. Fantastic. Radio stations would ring a bell for each day of the hostages being held in Cafe. Wow, that's crazy. I didn't did not know, know that, that but know yeah, that. yeah, that's I can crazy. understand that. Um, so that anyway. was also a big. It, the reason that the Carter Reagan thing is so important is because most people, I think, that know about this event know that the hostages were eventually released on, uh, uh, Reagan's inauguration day. Right. And they did that specifically as a big F U to Carter. Yep. Yep. So 85th Academy Awards, the film wins. Um, do you remember much about it? I had to look it up because I'm like, come on, what was there? Okay. The only movies that I, to me have held up. And I, again, I can go through a couple of these. There's one called Amor. I don't even know. I don't really. I don't. I don't even know that I've ever seen this film. 
be honest. It's a Hungarian. Let's see. Mm. They all from Hungary. Hungary, German film. Beasts of the Southern Wild. Again, no idea what that is. It is a... Yeah, don't know. Uh, Django Unchained, which is Tarantino. Uh, Les Miserables. And Life of Pi. Now, Spielberg has Lincoln. And then they did that... Uh, if you remember, Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence did one called Silver Linings Playbook. Don't and know one, one that you probably do know. And we could definitely do another get-together talk about a movie like this. Because this was a very controversial film. Zero Dark Thirty. Oh, yes. Oh, Ooh. yes. So it Argo beat Zero Dark Thirty, in my opinion, because they didn't want to highlight Zero Dark Thirty. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, a- that movie, woo, that's hardcore. It that is movie heavy is hardcore. duty. I would love to do that one. Uh, I did want to also mention anybody who's going to watch this movie now mm-hmm. and start digging into the history a little bit, uh, one thing that happened, and I mentioned it earlier on, was uh, Jimmy Carter had uh, uh, authorized Operation Eagle Claw to do uh, a military uh, attempt to, uh, to to extract uh, the the prisoners, and that was a huge failure. He looked yeah. terrible for it, and uh, Operation Eagle Claw is is referenced in the uh, the prologue of Delta Force. Mm-hmm. So, Delta Force is another one I wouldn't mind doing. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point. That's a great film. That's a great, great film. Uh, but yeah, great adapted screenplay. You guys know how I am about story. Yep. Um, and actually, uh, Chris Terrio is the guy who did the adaptation. He got the Oscar uh, for that. He um, uh, sadly also is the writer of BVS and Justice League. And you can see the Affleck connections there where he's yeah. trying to, he greases the wheel for him. He also wrote uh, Rise of Skywalker and Zack, Zack Snyder's version. So uh not everything can hit. Not everything can hit, but he did Argo. Like it's in there. I think <laughs> it comes down to you got to also consider who's producing, who's directing, yeah. who's who's the studio heads. I mean, I, I I think a lot of the failures of some of those movies you mentioned. Sure, it's not the writers. No, it's they a probably machine. had great ideas that got scrapped because well, we got to get this in there, we got to get that in there, and you know, too many cooks spoiling the broth. Yeah, it's the machinery. For sure. Did you ever? Um, oh man! My, as fast as it came in my brain, it left my brain. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll, we'll just keep Boomer. going. <laughs> it definitely just you know, too much information can't all be processed. Uh, so yeah, no great editing. Won an Oscar for editing. Won an Oscar for the adaptation. So yeah, a very well received film and uh, just really, I, I like you know. I, Troy Troy brings together again those life experience. Dean, I don't know if you it, Dean, I don't know if you go on streams or not. Dean, we should really include you on in one of these too because you'd bring a, you'd bring that layer as well. So uh, I really would like to throw that out to you if you want to reach out to me sometime and connect on that because it would be great to have D- you. Well. Yes, I was just reading this comment, spot oh, on. Goodness. Yeah, military was cut to the bone and then expected to do a majority a uh, 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 majorly complicated operation with units that had not even worked or trained together. Older Marines used to swear at Carter. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, we could do a whole segment just on, you know, we why could and do how. a whole segment comparing this era of the 70s yes. with what's to, going on right now. Correct. History's repeating itself in a lot of big ways. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, that'd be great. So, yeah, Dean, um, that'd be amazing because I think we, um, yeah, Troy and I definitely like, we enjoy doing this because it's, it's, it's the kind of thing to me that. Uh, this is not the type of content that most of our YouTube community is is really focused on, and it it these are this is kind of, to me the alternative. Like we can not only talk about a good movie, but it's also not like the genre film. It's sort of like something True. else, right? So I do try to do those. People have, people have kind of come at me over some of the Indian cinema stuff and maybe some of the comedies I've done or whatever because I'm like, well, no, I need to. I need to deal with the good and the bad and everything else too. I can't just keep hating on this. I can't keep doing the same thing that everyone else is doing right. when I do have other things that I like. Um, and it is a 10th anniversary. Like there's a reason to talk about Argo. Um, there's a reason to uh, revisit certain films at certain times. And by the way, there's another one coming up. It is the 30th anniversary of a few good men. 
Oh, it's one of my favorites. Oh, uh, man. Oh, I, you man. don't even need to play clips. I can act it out for you. I know. I know. It's, I have a friend, and that he, he literally always tries to argue with me. It is the best film of all time. Like It's his favorite film, and I'm like, man, I'm going to have to just let him know if we decide to do something. So it is in December, so I will message you and see if we can work that out and get that on the schedule for December. Uh, to do a Thursday uh, type if of you, historical. If you can't get me in, I will definitely at least be in the uh, in the chat because no, uh, no, we'll get it worked out. Man, yeah, we'll get it worked out. And Dean, I don't know how to connect. Dean, are you? If you're not on Twitter, here, Dean, I'll give you my email. You can just email me. It's okay, guys. My email is public in the chat. I mean, in the description. So, yeah, but there you go, Dean. Just email me how to connect with you if you are interested in joining us for a few good men. Because you're going to have the same kind of perspective we do. We've lived through some of this stuff. We understand yeah. some of the history. We enjoy history. And just, man, yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah. So I wish Nicholson had played chess puller there. Could be brothers. Oh, that's pretty oh, cool. Oh, man, yeah. that is pretty cool. Well, that's a pretty cool reference. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, again, uh, is it cheating the algorithms, whatever, whenever I do something like Few Good Men on 10th anniversary? Sure, in some ways. But I love the movie, and I love talking about good stuff, yeah. too. So it's an excuse. Any so. excuse. Any excuse I'm fine with. Absolutely. All right, we're going to do Few Good Men. Uh, wait a minute. I don't want to change the date. Hang on. I got to make sure. Because when I add it to my calendar, I got I to gotta get out of what I'm doing. Otherwise, it's going to change okay yeah so the anniversary is on the 9th of december but that's a friday and i can't do the friday so i will have to do the 8th so december the 8th let's do few good men with troy Whoop. sorry about that you're fine bro i got a little sound issue there sorry for the echo oh you're fine i, I stuff all the time Hold on. i'll fix this professional professional here <laughs> so yeah dean keep that in mind if you can email me let me know i'd love to have you with us man that'd be fun that'd be great so something like that i'd love to do uh some more analysis um yeah no i um so as i head into uh 2023 and we started turning the turning the uh the corner a little bit near this last half of the year troy what else says uh <laughs> troy's Chris says it's an echo of excitement. It's all good. I mean, yeah, I, in, in a way it kind of was. I, I accidentally uh, pulled the, the the thing, and so mm. Pops was coming through my main speakers, which would come back through the mic, and that's not good. Uh, yes. Real professional. And, uh, <laughs> so what? Uh, how, are, how are you uh, adapting your channel and different things you want to focus on and managing the time, that kind of thing? Uh, I know you've been on with uh, – Ryan and you, 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 and you and he were chatting it up about this kind of stuff and you've got yep. some great, great guests coming through on Fridays, but what else? Absolutely. So, uh, the, the, the past couple of weeks, we were talking about this in the green room earlier. I've been real busy for me cause I've been pulling double duty. My, uh, my regular sidekick, uh, aged boomer, uh, He's uh, he's been on sabbatical, uh, fellow, kind of fellow, enforced by Ian, fellow, fellow Floridian. He's been impacted by this storm. He that was way right. Me, though. Yeah. He was right in the path. So he's mm -hmm. still not as far as I've I've heard this week. He's still not moved back into his house. So I've been holding down his show, Geeky Geezers, on Sundays, uh, me and Nanette uh, and uh, gotten a lot of great feedback from from people saying hey you guys are great together you should do more stuff together <laughs> me and my wife do more stuff together imagine that huh. so uh so uh what i would do is I've, I've done two weeks of geeky geezers the pacelli edition and then throughout the week i would re-release the clips of each yep. each segment so that uh, you don't have to sit and watch two hours you can just get the the segment you were interested in uh that's gone really well so for the past two weeks i've literally had a a, a posting every day perfect um but on fridays every friday uh last call on uh friday evenings nine o'clock central time i have my my regular Netter calls it my drunk stream, uh, where I drink and I have, usually I have a, another YouTuber on whose channel I just love and want to support and, and, and chat with. Um, tomorrow, in fact, I'll be, uh, having geek talk on mm -hmm. and, uh, the following week, this is a big one for me, over a hundred thousand subscribers to this channel, retro blasting. If you're into wow. toys at all, yeah, toy guy, yeah, Michael that's, French. That's and stuff. I'm like, 
the fact that you even noticed my little channel, dude. Okay, yeah, I definitely want to get you on, you know? Yeah. So so hey, that's something ask, to look forward to. Yeah, ask, and all that can happen is they say no or ignore you. That's the absolute worst thing that happens. They could ignore you or say no. And every exactly. now and again, they'll just say yes. And uh, I got a, I got another video coming up. Uh, I had hoped to have it out this week. I may not get it out till this weekend. I'll do a review and commentary on the, the most recent Hellraiser reboot. Mm -hmm. Um very excited about that. Uh, I'm, I'm actually glad I took some, my time on this one because it kind of required me re-watching it, having my wife watch it and get, got her opinion on it. I, I had to mull some things over on it. So Okay. I look I forward to give that. It he is due. definitely a uh, Hellraiser uh, aficionado based on just the comments to my own I videos. am a super fan. Yeah, yeah. I can I can really yeah. uh, pick that apart, and I'm going to – I'm probably going to uh, – I have some things to say about this movie that are very unlike anyone else that's uh, uh, reviewing it out there. I can see that. I can see. Yeah, the, the, the third one wasn't easily available for me to stream, so I kind of stopped. So I will kind of, I don't want to watch them out of order. I really want to try to watch them in the chronological order, even though that may not be the best order or there's some good ones and bad ones or whatever. I know Scott Derrickson did one, and I'm kind of anxious to get to that one to rewatch it. But I just want to, you know. I'm, I'm going to say. You watch the first four, and then the last one, Judgment. All the rest in between are Hellraiser films in name only. Sure. They, they have nothing to do with the continuity of all the rest of them. Yeah, the, so the third one's where I got stuck, where it doesn't appear to be streaming on anything that I own. I don't own physical copies of it. I um, hadn't watched them in years, so like I said, it was fun to kind of revisit the franchise with some fresh eyes yeah. um, and then kind of contrast that with my initial love living through their release when they actually happened and kind of be able to share my thoughts. Did you read the bit. comics? Uh, some of the comics and some of Clive Barker's other comics. Yeah. And I did read Hellbound Heart, but again, this is... 30 years ago right so it's been a minute yeah it's been you know and the blood canticle did you read that one uh i don't think i read that one. i think you mentioned that before i don't think that's yeah. the one i did read i it didn't it, i don't know again when it's one of those things because like i said it's been like three decades so i can't say with 100 percent certainty but the other thing struck me so well yeah i definitely remembered those i had those comics for a long time before yeah, i parted i still with have them. them i've got yeah i've got all the comics all the books all yeah. the movies yeah. physical media that's the way to go uh, so that's awesome. That's awesome. So yeah, I try to find a balance. So I was going to ask you what you how how did you like doing the clips? Did you find it too cumbersome or something you might actually no? I, uh, I, uh, I I I I followed the same format that I did for uh, I, I set up a template, you know, mm -hmm. and I just take out the 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 mm -hmm. the opening and closing card and uh, you know the the video swap it out, swap it in. I can have it done in a few minutes. Um, same thing with uh, I've got a, a a toy video coming up. Same thing. I just change the music, cha you know, just cut and paste. You know, it's so. Uh, so I'll share. This. So I was gonna. I, I may do a whole video on this because someone else told me I should. But okay. you know, I'll, to do a video, mm -hmm. I will I will record it in Streamyard with no editing. So what I'll do is, I will pick an intro that has just a little bit of give on it. Mm -hmm. Hit hit live. Or record mm. rather, because it'll be a record only. Record, place my intro, record my video, play an outro in the record. So now there's no editing. I, I made it look like it was almost like a live broadcast that's been edited without having to do any of the editing. So then my video is done. So I don't like so like when I do Andor or She Hulk, that's how mm. all this got made. I didn't actually do any editing. I just did it and you know, that's it, is what it is. Uh, with my clip stuff, like what you were saying, because I just right before this I down I well, I downloaded last night. Mm -hmm. the stream because you know how sometimes it takes forever for the streams to download and you know sure you got it you know you got a two a two hour stream it's going to take up too much bandwidth to do anything else so i right. usually do them overnight i actually will put the intro in and the outro in have this massive file in between then shave it off shave it off you know you save it as an edit sure. then this is a clip you yep. know you save it Okay, restore it, put the whole thing back, delete that piece out, next clip, just keep moving the file so it's smaller and smaller and then it's kinda yeah. kinda like yeah, that's kinda yeah. the way I do it. I, I had not I didn't know you could use StreamYard that way. I mm -hmm. uh just recently started uh working with OBS to okay. record my uh self, you know, mm -hmm. and then edit it and then upload it to YouTube. I've yeah. only used StreamYard for, for live streaming. I kinda don't know how to use it for anything else. Yeah. It's um 
it took some getting used to. It still takes some getting used to because I don't really use OBS at all. Um, it's yeah, not very user friendly at all. Yeah, that's what I've heard. That's why. I, that's again for me, because my only issue with Streamyard, because people keep saying something about I'm Streamyard and I boomer with Streamyard and I complain about Streamyard and whatever. But I'm like, well, here's my issue with Streamyard: all the buttons are too close together. That, right. So I go to hit this button. It's within three quarters of an inch from an end broadcast button. <laughs> you know, I can hit this button, or you can you you click it, and there's a pause. So I don't know if I'm hitting show or hide or I mean, it's just that's old that's people my, problems, folks. <laughs> it's user interface issues is my issue. I don't. I'm not taking sole responsibility since other folks have similar. It's issues. a loose nut between keyboard and chair. <laughs> Definitely uh, a lot of loose nuts. Yeah. <laughs> well, my brother, anything else you could think of you want to talk about and plug or anything like that? Um. No, I uh, I certainly appreciate every subscription, and if you subscribe and hit that notification bell, I uh, just recently got past 500, so I've got that uh, nifty little community tab, and uh, I am going to be celebrating that in a couple weeks when Retro Blasting's on. I will be, uh, during that live stream, doing a little bit of a giveaway, and the details will be on that community tab, so if you want in on it, Come, come find the details, and uh, and I'll share with you. Uh, got got some toy videos coming up uh, in the next week or so. Planning on a lot of uh, specifically Star Wars holiday special custom mm -hmm. toy videos uh, in the next month as we lead up to a rewatch of the Star Wars holiday special on my channel. That's awesome. That's awesome. And Troy will be with me. He's going to help me try to navigate through what turned into chaos last time. So I had to make sure I called in more than one. So I know Mags is going to be with me. Troy's going to be with me. I have a lot of folks that may come and go, but yep. we're going to celebrate the 1500 subscribers a week from yesterday. So be on Wednesday and have some giveaways as well. Lots of giveaways. I have stuff that you might even like my friend. I have stuff that you might even like. Let me see. We got a couple more. You, got a couple, you have a couple more minutes. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Okay. When you're locked in your house during a hurricane, you start finding things, right? Yeah. So when we moved, and I, my only explanation is I probably had an overly packed box or something, and I rushed to pack it, and then I got, you know, you secure everything as you go yeah. when you have collectibles. Right. These were in the bottom in, a, in this drawer. Uh-oh. Box of original Indiana Joan wax nice. packs. Nice. With the bubble gum in there? Oh, yeah, they're sealed. Oh, yeah, the oh, original. Nice. These are OGs. And then all four different kinds. I had Jedi. all of those. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, we'll give some of these away. I have some nice. comic books to give away. I have I have some more Tron cards. So, good, more good. Tron cards. So we'll uh, yeah we'll have some fun doing that kind of stuff, saying thanks to folks, things like that. And uh, no, I'd be happy yeah. to help you out with that. It'll be a good time. And you know, thanks to you, you know, doing stuff like this. This is a good time. It's your time. You're giving me your time, and I appreciate it so much, man. And I, I just love just the bonding. Like you know, we're you know, thousand plus miles away and we can chit chat like the brothers that we are just separated by distance until this YouTube thing brought us together. So I had said that was why getting a community tab was so important to me. Cause I feel like I'm building community here. That's mm -hmm. really what it's all about. Sure. Uh, I had a lot of bigger YouTubers say, forget the monetization. It's not worth it. If you're not doing it for some other reason, because you enjoy it. And uh, I'll tell you the people that have been encouraging me, you know, telling me, oh, I love this this stream you did with your wife. You should do more with her. Gosh, that makes me want to do more and keep doing it. So, well, that's what you have to find first. If you know, yeah. I, I actually do Ryan's show here in a couple of weeks, so I don't even know how to uh, begin to try to scratch the surface of my legacy. But from somebody who's had side hustles for you know over twenty something years doing something like this, you have to love and have. You just literally have to have some element of passion and love of doing it, because. Um, there's going to be times where there is no reward. It's just, it's like, you're just, you're just, it's a big swing and a miss, right? It's baseball, right? right? It's just a big swing and a miss. Um, and there's going to be times where life gets in the way and I am the poster child of life getting in the way. I was actually mm -hmm. going through my old videos because I, because I thought about like, as you start to make so many videos, I thought, how are people ever going to find some of the things that are older? And then I realized I should create like a whole bunch of playlists. And if nothing else, it entertains me and it organized my crap for me to find. So I literally had like 50 playlists. So, I realized that there was like there literally is a whole year gap in my pops content. Oh. So I had gotten I bought the camera and I started doing some content. And then in 2020, pandemic was up and running. We were doing I was doing two or three channels. I was doing some different things. Uh, I was taking more control of stuff that I actually had ownership or stakes in. 
And then we decided to we we bought the property and we made the big move. So basically, blackout for literally almost exactly a year. It was crazy to the day. I was like, whoa, that's really really. It was totally a coincidence of when I come back online to at least get my feet wet again. But again, yeah, still in the pandemic, still up and down with the day job and all the other life stuff gets in the yeah. way until March of this year. Uh, but yeah, it's it it has to be joy and love and fun, whatever your niche is. And that's why I find it fascinating um, when you find that YouTuber that has some sort of weird thing that you didn't even think that would be a channel, but right. then you're just so full of like, oh, that's got to, you know, good on you. Yeah. Happy, I'm happy on you. You know what I mean? Exactly. And uh, the fact that we all can come together and talk shop about all sorts of different things and loves and passions and for different reasons, right? So different yep. things uh, for different reasons. Uh, it just, it Yeah. So, yeah, I'm trying to balance using the community tab at least once a day or so. I'm trying to because I've always been like a multi-tiered person because I see because I'm around so many normies all day. I see all three things, right? I see people like me who love yeah. long form content like you and I are making in this moment. Sure. An hour is nothing to us, let alone two or three hours. I have no problem listening to something that's in three hours. Um. I have people who only want to do a video. That's always been my niche was always doing videos. Actually, that's like where I'll start. Like we, we, we would do like, well, even when I did the radio show, we started uploading the radio show. Nobody cared about the radio show itself. It was about getting the clips out of it. Oh, you interviewed yeah. so-and-so for this segment. You got to make sure that's what people want to see or hear. Right. Uh, and then with the shorts thing, I was like, cause that's what they're pushing. I was like, well, to me, there's no benefit to that. And then yeah. someone sold me on it being an ad. It's a commercial. So yeah. most of my shorts are, hey, look at this trading card or this comic book or something like that. So that's what I do. I feel I treat it as that until otherwise figured out. I am dabbling with the conversion. Like a take a like if we had a cool sound bite or something we said during this, there's a way to convert that to a short. I'm trying to yeah. learn how to do that because Ironcaster keeps knocking it out of the part with his little quiet, dry wit that he has. It's just He's one of those people, you know, you, you have them in your life. You meet these people that have this, this, this sense of humor that's next level. Yeah. It's like you just, you, you can't capture it. It's, it's, it gets lost in the two hour conversation. You're like, oh, I just want that one minute comment. I so I maybe I, I may tap into that a little bit, but uh, yeah, man. Yeah. It's been freaking great. It's been awesome. And chat, you guys are awesome. Thank you to all my members that have been showing up and hanging out and supporting me so much. You Appreciate have that. Great chat. Oh yeah, they're so they're they're just they're awesome and uh, yeah, I don't uh, I just do man, I just do have fun doing it. I'm so happy for you and Netter. I've enjoyed it. I enjoy it. I love uh, catching up. I I you, everyone is so Troy will vouch for this because if you don't know, pops catches up. So it's these big spurts and then silence. Like it's a yeah. whole lot of up and go. And it'll be like I'm listening at one and a half speed. You know, I don't watch every single thing, but I'm just catching up, catching up. <laughs> so Troy here. sounds like a chip. Like, hey, that's good, that's good. You're not, you're not too bad. There's, well, <laughs> nothing is as bad as trying to listen to like a Ben Shapiro thing. Like, I'll forget. Oh, he's he <laughs> speaks fast to begin with. Oh yeah, yeah. So if, so if I have it on one and a half speed, and like I'll, I'll try to like hit like because what I do is I create like a watch list, right? This is what I want to yeah. watch. Like I'll save them. I do that too. Stick. Yeah. So he's talking about something I haven't heard of or something like that. That's generally right. speaking why I don't listen to the whole show, but he'll like have a clip or something. I'm like, I don't know what right. that is. And then it'll, it'll go from you guys or whatever. And you're talking. It's a little faster. Sure. Yep. Uh, but then it'll go to him. It's like, hey, come on. Like, oh, oh, yeah, crap. exactly. Gotta, oh. <laughs> My I mean, it must just be gold. youth. I think it's because he's so young because, oh you know, if it was someone my age, I'd say anyone talking like that is probably doing some speed or something. Oh, man, they'd be on some acid. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, all right, my friend. Well, as always, folks, uh, as I'd like to tell you guys, you know, be blessed. Make tomorrow better than today. Don't uh, do not do anything I wouldn't do in some ways. Uh, talk hard. And, yeah. uh, you know, but remember to spend a little time to chill. And then I get a good example, teach you how to do that in the box. All I do is chill. chill. My life is a thrill for real, Bob Ross. I be too comfortable to drama. You don't wanna cause a problem.